Congress. What laws can Congress pass? What laws can Congress not pass? Well, that brings us to this week's case. It involves a situation that, believe it or not, involved a fight on a school ground. On a school ground, that's correct. Congress, though, has passed a law that provides immunity to school teachers as a result of the duties they perform while teachers. A lot of people aren't aware of this law. It's rel relatively new. But basically, it provides that if somebody has a claim against a school teacher for injury or something else, that arose while the teacher was conducting their duties as a teacher, that they cannot be sued. Okay. Well, in this instance, the party who wanted to bring suit, and it involved, unfortunately, a knife fight that took place in a school where a kid got really badly cut up, and his parents brought claim against the school district, including the superintendent and the principal and the teacher, contending they didn't properly supervise the area where the fight took place. All that being said, the school district said you can't sue the teacher or the principal because they were teachers conducting their normal teaching activities when this took place and under the law passed by Congress, they have immunity. Well, the parents said that law is unconstitutional. You can't do it. You just can't do it. This is a local matter. This was our local school. It didn't involve what Congress wanted to do. It didn't involve Congress sitting there in Washington. It involved us here in our local town, in our local community, and it has nothing to do with what Congress thinks should be done, shouldn't be done. Well, the court looked at this, and they looked at the way in which this case arose. The case arose in Missouri, and what they found was that when Congress allocated money to the school district and did this grant of funds, they had a condition attached to the grant. And the school district had to agree to adopt the congressionally imposed immunity statute if they were going to be using the funds that were coming from Congress. Court looked at that and said, you know, that's pretty typical. That's the kind of thing that happens all the time. Congress will give out money, and under its spending abilities, it can attach conditions to the way in which that money can be used or can't be used. And they did that. In this instance, the condition was that there had to be an immunity granted to the teachers, and here it was granted. And therefore, you, parent of child that got badly cut up, do not have a claim because the money had a condition attached to it that provided those teachers got immunity. Well, that's the way the case went. It got thrown out of court, and the parents were unable to go forward on that claim for the injuries to their kid. Well, is this the way it should be? Is this the way it shouldn't be? This is the way it's been for some long period of time. This also explains why there is a 21-year-old drinking age across the country. How did that come into existence? It came into existence because Congress, in the money that it allocated for the international, international, for the interstate, construction of highways provided a clause in the funding that said you must have in your state, if you're going to use this money, a law that says people can't drink unless they're 21 years old. Before that came into existence, there were states that had 18-year-old drinking laws. New York had an 18-year-old drinking law for a long period of time. Wisconsin had an 18-year-old drinking law for beer and wine. Those states now have 21-year-old drinking laws because Congress said if you're going to use the money for the highways, you have to have this law in your state. It's an example, the courts say, of Congress exercising its spending power. There are many people who say, you know, this has really gotten all upside down. Once upon a time, we were 50 United States. We were 50 states that came together and formed a government that was united, but each state still had the ability to do things the way they wanted to do it. And now, what do we have? Congress is taking the money from the states, is then holding it in Washington and giving it back to the states, but with conditions attached, and we have become essentially a federal government instead of having a government that's made up of individual states with individual states' rights. Well, that is an argument that's made. That's where we often find ourselves. But that is something that may change as the courts increasingly are looking at providing states' rights. Where will all this go? It's going to be figured out on a case-by-case -case basis. The law changes, evolves every day. And that's why we bring you these cases every week so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.